A magnifying glass scans a title. Words appear. The computer is a valuable tool. Once I have accessed the information, the computer makes me more independent. Students in a computer lab laugh. Words appear. When I'm using a computer, I am like any other student. Words appear, working together. People with disabilities and computer technology. Dan Comden, Access Technology Consultant. The computer is a vital tool for education and employment. There's really nothing that does the variety of tasks that the computer can do, but it's not perfect. That's because not everyone can use the standard computer. And that's where adaptive technology comes in. With a little extra hardware or software, computers and the internet can be accessible to people with a wide range of abilities and disabilities. Adaptive technology delivers a big payoff for a relatively small investment. The cost of adaptive technology really is, is quite small, um, particularly when you look at the impact that that can have for a person able to do their job more effectively, more efficiently. Adaptive technology addresses the challenges imposed by specific disabilities. For example, low vision. White letters appear on a deep blue background. Low vision. I use a screen enlarger, which allows me to see um, everything on the computer screen that a normal person would see with, um, Nate, student. with regular type on the computer. I have a computer that has lots screen. Knee, student. And I also have a voice output, which uh, we watch on the screen. When I use my computer and using the internet, I could research for, uh, for the term paper easily and faster. I could look up in the encyclopedia and have the computer read the subject on the screen for me instead of using the encyclopedia book, which will take me a long, long time. For someone who is sensitive to light, software can reverse the screen from dark on light to light on dark. Large print key top labels may also be useful for people with visual impairments, especially if they're just learning to type. White letters appear on a deep blue background. Blindness. In the lab. The most common adaptation for people who are blind is speech output. The lab is well equipped with adaptive technology. Tours and demonstrations can be arranged by appointment. Justin, student. Really, it helps me out a lot on the internet. Um, I have voice output that reads everything that comes up on the screen, on the computer screen. So I'm able to access anything that I want to on the computer. And it's, it's really helped me out a lot. I'm kind of a computer junkie, but the aspect of computers that I really like is this whole internet bit. Wesley, student. It opens so many doors, and then the email too. A scanner combined with speech output allows people who are blind to read printed materials. A tall fellow in a Batman costume comes soaring out of the winter sky. Other adaptations include braille displays and braille printouts. White letters appear on a deep blue background. Speech and hearing impairments. In the lab, a woman with a hearing impairment types on a keyboard. People with speech or hearing impairments can use their computers to communicate with friends, teachers, or co-workers. I really like using the internet because it's easier to communicate with people rather than using the telephone. Katie, student. I can read it instead of listening, and it's easier for me to read it than to hear. Yeah, the internet is helpful. It allows me um, to communicate, to communicate more easily because of my voice. Jesse, uh, student. It allows me to uh, say more, and express myself more easily. How? A student uses a keyboard with small pictures on the keys. We. Playing. I'm sorry. I know. This. Okay. Um, again. How are we playing this again? There are places you could land where you're on blue and you're more conspicuous. With the place. People who can't speak can use communication devices to participate in group discussions and one-on-one -on -one interactions. Anthony, student. It's like our army men wearing their clothes. That's exactly right. Those who can't hear require visual alternatives to sound output. Buffy, student. When they, when the computer speaks, they have ways of captioning that. Every college should have.
have either a disabled student services office or at least a contact person to assist you. The computer system I use uses visual output rather than sound output. Lloyd. Which means instead of students making a chime or a ring, it blinks the screen. White letters on a deep blue background. Learning disabilities. People with learning disabilities can use a variety of software to help with reading and with writing papers. Adaptive technology ranges from spell check and grammar check to speech input and output. Washington is leading the world in global health. Patrick, students. Schoolwork, it helps me because when me and my mom like, try to work to do it, we usually fight. And so it usually ends up being a, a bad consequence. So if I can do it on my own, it's way better. Washington phase two schedule August 7th to 13th. I basically just use uh, standard word processors with a uh, Joshua student. Uh, grammar checker and a spell checker and dictionaries on the computer. Just using the word processor alone, it reduces the amount of time that it takes to, to write things. Crystal, student. I have a voice box that it will read it to me so I understand what I'm reading. Was Helen Keller the first deaf-blind person in the United States to be educated? And then when I have to like read books, I just scan those so they can read the books to me so I don't have to spend two hours reading one page or something. The things that I found really uh, David, student. helpful have been uh, speech-to-text uh, programs. You know, you talk to your computer and it writes. At the University of Washington, a variety of hardware and software I've written papers at college in you know, a quarter of the time that it would have taken me to type them by hand. With speech to text, I just say the word and it shows up on the screen. Period. White letters on a deep blue background. Mobility impairments. In the lab, a woman using a wheelchair uses an adjustable table. People with mobility impairments have a wide range of adaptive technology options. For some, flexibility in the positioning of tabletops, monitors, and keyboards is helpful. I uh, Mitch, student. had Dan make a special keyboard holder to hold my keyboard in a vertical position so I could use both hands to type. And we also turned my monitor on its side. Uh, I used a mouthpiece that I type with. I can do uh, at least 30 words per minute when the words are going from my head to the keyboard. I like to write lots of things and... Rodney, student. Were it not for computers and word processing and spell checking and things like that, it would take me ages. So I have a trackball, which I roll around. A Rofi, student. And I use sticky keys, like, to hold down control and shift. The computer helps me type reports better and it's easier on my arm. I don't have to wear my prosthetic. One thing that I use is a keyboard where Jeffrey, the student. keys are enlarged and there's more space between because I, when I hit keys on the regular keyboard, I get double letters. In the lab, a computer is labeled right-handed. For people who need to type with only one hand, left and right-handed keyboards are available. A student uses an on-screen keyboard. You could also use an on-screen keyboard with a head pointer or a mouth stick for hands-free computer control. Word prediction software can increase speed and accuracy. I have an on-screen keyboard, and it also has word prediction. It's where I Buddy, student. throw in a letter, like this, so let's say I throw in a T. And like five words that start with T will pop up. The most common ones that I use, they'll pop up and I'll click on it and it'll just print it out. I got fairly fast. Some people may choose to bypass the keyboard by using Morse code. A SIP and puff switch registers dot with a SIP and dash with a puff. Special hardware and software translate Morse code into a form that computers understand. I'm a junior this year. Other people may choose a voice-activated system to replace the keyboard. I use a um, program that helps me type. Whatever I say, I type. I talk into the microphone and it types it out on the computer screen. It makes me feel a lot more independent. Oscar, um, student. Don't have to rely on somebody for, for so much uh, that I can do it myself. White letters on a deep blue background. Health impairments. 
The internet can be accessed from almost any location at any time that a person wants to use it. This is a real benefit for people with health impairments. Nadira, student. I think that computer can help hospitalized uh, kids. When I was in the hospital for like one month, I talked to other kids and I could like socialize with them and people send me mails, creating meals to get well. In the past year, I have... Uh, Mitch, student. I lived in a hospital and an internet connection there allow, allowed me to communicate with teachers so I could attempt to keep up on studies. I think the internet would be helpful for people with disabilities that have to um, be homeschooled or stay home a lot. Megan, student. Because it gives them access to resources and communication between the schools and the teachers and access to people with disabilities like themselves. White letters on a deep blue background. Technology means success. For anyone with a disability, adaptive computer technology is a vital link to success in school and in work. It's more fun. I mean, I've had people try to type for me. And, you know, it's just no fun trying to tell someone else what to write. Like, I took a poetry class, and I felt weird trying to tell some friends or my age what I'm thinking and what I'm trying to put on paper. I like using my computer because it helped me to be independent. Hollis, student. It lets me express my ideas. I virtually live on computers. Shem. On the computer, student. people are more on an even keel. On the electronic field, we're all equal words appear. For more information, contact Do It on the web www.washington.edu slash doit. Phone, voice, or TTY, area code 206-685-DOIT. Address, Do It, University of Washington, Box 355-670, Seattle, Washington, 98195-5670. Director Cheryl Bergstaller. PhD. The content of this video is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant numbers HRD 9255803 and 9800324. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this product do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation. Copyright 2007 and 2000, University of Washington.